that you have a video, a, a surprise announcement video, and it's related to Logan Paul. So would you explain this, please? Okay, you guys, th this is the biggie. This is the biggie. Now, y'all pay attention. For, almost, for about eight months, I kept my mouth shut about the Logan Paul, Gary, King Pokemon, BGS 10 Charizard. I promised Logan he was going to do a big video presentation. Get, 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 Gary, can you give us a little bit of background? In, before, let's give us some background information as to what this is even about, because I don't know that everyone understands the backstory here, and it's a pretty big story. Yeah, well, I, like many of you know, I have two BGS 10 first edition based Charizards. A third one came out last uh, November, I believe it was, and I spent six months looking for that car, trying to find out who graded the BGS-10 Charizard, first edition base Charizard, because I wanted it. I offered a lot of money for it. I offered a huge finder's fee. I worked for six months trying to find that card and never did. So where does the story go from here? Well, is, are we going to show the video? They're going to show the video, but they need, they're switching. Are you ready? Okay, we got it. We got it. About a minute. Okay, now, now I promised Logan. I promised Logan back then that uh, when I when I found out about where it was, I promised to keep my mouth shut. I had probably about ten thousand DMs and messages and emails, people asking me for the truth about this card, and I kept my mouth shut. I promised a friend that I wouldn't say a word about it, and I kept my word. That's 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 even from my even from my family, because he didn't want the word to get out about this card. Eventually, Logan told me that he said, "Gary, I want you to do this video. I want you to do this video for us." He gave me permission to do this video, and so. So I thought, well, listen, Logan, you have 10 million followers or 20 million followers, something ridiculous. And I said, and, uh, you know, you want me to do it when you can do it yourself? And he said, this is just as much about me as it is about him. So he wanted me to do it. So I got together with the fellows from Collecticon. And Collecticon we're going to have in Houston next weekend. We're all flying out to Houston next weekend. I'll have to recover all week. But... So the Collecticon guys, they got together, they got a producer, they got the camera people, and we did a video on this. And so this is a video basically called Yo, I'm The Truth, The Whole Truth, and Nothing But The Truth about Logan, Gary, and the BGS-10 Charizard. This is a world exclusive. I showed some of our influencers last night. None of them got it on camera. I made sure the first time the world is hearing the true story out of my mouth, the true story. There's been a lot of supposition. A lot of people said a lot of stuff. Uh, but this is the truth because I, me and Logan know the truth about this whole thing. And so we did the video. I got to know. Uh, What's now, that? What is happening? Now we're going to show this video on this live stream to the entire world. Those 10,000 people that continued to ask me, finally, you're going to find out, in my own words, what the truth about this was. So well, it's just like a, we just get know, rolled right now. That's and hopefully right. we'll get this up. Here it goes. Oh, shoot. This is a serious video. Okay. My name is Gary Hayes, and I'm known as King Pokemon. A lot of people called me King because I had the information. I always had the biggest collection. I have probably the world's number one Pokemon collection inside this case. I never did grow up, so I continued with Pokemon for the last 17 years. There's no other grade at a 10. Beckett grades so much harsher. Yeah, pretty much the two reasons that people grade cards are, number one, to keep their childhood memories protected. The other reason would be for value's sake, because the difference in one number, like between a 9 and a 10, can be a 10 times value difference. 
between a friend of mine and I, uh, his name was Eddie Brenda Schultz, E. Birdman. Him and I had a decision to make when Pokemon started to tail off a little bit in 2002, 2003. We had discussions every night for hours trying to figure out what we could do to get the hobby kicked off again. We decided on grading, these guys go and back, so we went like, with PSA. Real far back. That has maintained to this day. Yeah, You're going to find about like, eight to ten times more PSA than you would Beckett's. Today, I believe there's about 125 or less PSA 10 first edition based Charizards. The equivalent to a PSA 10 Charizard would be the 9.5 Beckett. Beckett is gem mint. PSA 10 is gem mint. That's the equivalent. A pristine 10 in a Beckett slab. Anytime you get a 10 on one of the original cards, you're shocked. You have to remember these these sheets, like I have behind me here, I can't zoom out. They it's were like all that on their screen, so. stacked up. There were big rollers that roll those sheets off, off of each other. Oh, that's sick. And then they get, stuff. you know, cut by these cutting machines How and that. How many people so have to work at a factory something there? Something like that in pristine condition is very unlikely, considering what they go through. Two pristine tens that I have. I got the first one quite a number of years ago, you know, in a collection uh, that was part already graded. Then the second one I got, I got a phone call from Lee Steinfeld, Leon Hart, and he told me that he found the girl who had the second one and that she was that. interested in selling. We made the exchange, I got the card, and then Lee and I made a, a video on it. And I like knew there would never be another one. The pristine 10 and we got this one, both of them. Look at that, right there, guys. That's so incredible. That's how I got the second one. 2020, when the pandemic hit in the early part of the year, suddenly a lot of people had extra time on their hands. You know, where they could sit at home, they could, you know, look back and, you know, those memories start flooding back in. Logan Paul was one of those guys because Logan Paul was a big Pokemon lover as a kid. We pulled the Blastoise. It's the Blastoise! He found me. He this said, really Oh, I just want you to know I love value. your collection. I'd, uh, you know, I'd love to. Uh, you know, see it sometime, you know, but I didn't see that as being as big as big of a deal until my boys said that's a very big deal. They had a big oh party God, bus. They had about maybe up to 10 people or something. Uh, Logan didn't want to impose. He said, listen, Gary, I'll just come in by myself with, you know, with one camera. I said, no. I said, no, everybody, everybody can come in. You know, that's perfectly fine. But the impressive part was him even considering that, thinking that, that he didn't want to impose on me. And I started showing him my cards, thinking to myself, this is a lot to do about, okay, you know, yeah. just coming over to check out a guy's Pokemon you collection, say right? Else crazy? After seeing my cards, seeing those two Beckett 10 Charizards, along with all the other Charizards, he asked me first, he said, you know, Gary, do you mind if I talk to Devin privately just for a few minutes? He, he, just, he just considered everything. He didn't want to impose on me. He didn't want me to feel bad. I said, that's fine. Do whatever you want. He asked Devin, he said, uh, do you think your dad would mind if I made an offer, you know, on his Beckett tens? Right. Of course, yeah. Devin made it very, very clear that that would never happen. And it's true. Those two Beckett yeah, cards that. were kind of like my identity. He wanted the, one of the Beckett tens of his two originally. Did he sell it? No, he only had... He asked Devin, well, do you think your dad might it's sell one third. of the other Charizards, one of the other PSA 10 ones? And Devin said... Did he sell them all his really Charizards? Logan asked him, but would he be insulted or would he be embarrassed if I were to try to? And Devin said, oh, no, you're not going to embarrass him. Do you think he sold more of his Charizards he said, okay. we know? And then he came back out here. Be, he sat down on the couch. All the Charizards or something. And he went his bodyguard in a men in black outfit and that came walking in with a briefcase in his hand laid it down over here in front of logan and logan said you know i want to make you an offer on something took the case he opened it up it was full of cash he said i'm not going to ask you about your beckett tens but for one of your psa tens 
I want to offer you one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. And right, we know I, that. We know that. I think you can see on camera. I just go. Like I've been offered many times before to sell the cards. He started. He started talking uh, in a real personal way, looking me right in the eye. It wasn't the type of thing like you walk into a Macy's to purchase something, right? When he looked at me, there was a passion in his eyes, a a true love and interest for what he was offering. I immediately sensed that this is real. It gave me pause. I actually started thinking about it. You know, what would this mean for the hobby? Am I going to make him feel bad if I say no? How am I going to feel if I do sell one? I just couldn't think of a reason why not. I said, well, if I do it, you know, it's not about your flashing money in front of me and that. I have enough for yeah. my lifetime and, and that's it. Uh, I said, it's not for that reason, but I just feel that it's an important thing to do. And so he said, does that mean you're going to sell me one? And I said, yes. I think he definitely had that. Right? Some kind of, at least a little regret maybe. I don't know though. And he had a look on his face that was so real. And that's I gotta felt be so, so that's good be so tough for him about the, saying, his Let's Part of do his it. identity. And I never would have thought I could feel that way. So what do you think? He regretted it I maybe? I gave him the eight because we know all this already charizards i had and i said you pick which one you want obviously there's little you know there's a, a 10 there's a a scale you know from a weak 10 to a strong 10 i thought well it's only fair i'll let him pick which one he wants he got him in his hand he scrolled through them he pulled one out and he said this is the one for all of us to see he said, this one is so redder he took a good one and than he all the, the other ones. I don't believe he ever put it in his pocket. I think he kept it in his hand the whole time. Soon after, he got involved in some of my charity work, you know, for the Aoki Foundation uh, for Brain Health and Autism. He became a friend, became a good friend. I felt like I was right all along that this, this is just a very, very good human being. A couple months later, uh, somebody, I can't remember who, but somebody With messaged Beckett. me and said, did you hear there's a third BGS-10, a third pristine Beckett's first edition Charizard? That hit me like a ton of bricks. I didn't think there would ever be another one. I went on Graham Stephan's show right? and on his financial channel, not a Pokemon channel. I had the only two up until about three, four months ago. Now, there are three of those in existence, three uh, Beckett's gem, uh, pristine 10s. Somehow somebody came up with one, graded it through Beckett's, and a third one came out. Nobody knows who it was. We don't know who it was. But, like, how? I'm trying to find them. So I many people have tried to regrade. Anybody who could find that third PSA one for 10s, me, I offered 750000 And send it to Beckett and, and failed miserably. finder's fee. $800,000 in total. Figuring that if the 50,000 didn't flush somebody out, somebody hearing that that card that they graded with all these other cards, they can get three quarters of a million dollars. They're going to come forward. Not a peep. I'm scrolling across, guys. There. Or five months after I was they, invited they, over again to Grant Stephens the, the house card to watch the neck. Logan Paul Mayweather fight. We uh, watched the preliminaries, we had a cookout, we were having a good time and I'm sitting back on the couch and I'm looking at the TV set and now suddenly Logan comes walking out to the ring wearing a BGS-10 first edition base was, charge. I was so shocked when I saw I that the first time. I almost fell over. Almost everybody in the room, they all know me real well, turned and looked at me like that. And the things that were going through my head is, why didn't Logan tell me? Yeah, James, me? I've tried. And then tried to send my I thought, to, to where it. did he get the card?
Having I it started in the case and sending it in is like it. is ridiculous. Not only tough. recognizing the card where you can actually Having recognize it raw slight is centering still differences, incredibly difficult. Uh, holofoil, the holofoil stars in certain places. There was absolutely no question that that card he wore to the ring was my card. Yeah, I saw some people were analyzing it and they they saw it had to be the same card. So people figured it out a while when ago. When you're grading cards, it now. there can very often be a gray area where like something officially. falls right between grades but see, in the thinking, grader's I, I think own mind. In that that card was already sent to Beckett Plus you to try to get the cross grade graders. before Logan you even had have it. Two different people look at it. One might have kicked it up. One might not have kicked it up. Logan didn't even cross my mind with any of this in that because I knew the cards obviously he took the card he submitted it for a crossover and he was able to get it upgraded you know from a psa 10 to a beckett pristine and yes that's the same card i tried to do the same thing with and one of the top three i thought were going to have a chance to get that 10 and i didn't quite get it you know over that over that little gray area between grades and logan was able to it's so tough. It's so tough. To I do did that. ask Logan later, and and he said, Gary, I couldn't tell you. He said that, you know, it, I was just planning this this moment for so long to wear this. You know, if I ever got to fight Mayweather, that I was going to wear this card, and I, I didn't want to take that a chance of ridiculous. spoiling uh, the surprise. I get a lot of questions, people saying, well, how does that make you feel? You got to you got to be sick about that. I got to tell you the truth. I couldn't be happier because it was Logan who got it. The same guy that sat across this room from me looked me right in the eye with a with a, a look of love for these cards. He said, you could try to trade me your two for this one. And I wouldn't do it. Oh, I'd be that crying. Tells me I'd be crying. <laughs> that what I believe I'd that be on the night floor in this room, that it meant more to him at that moment than it did me keeping it. It's one of three in the world. It is my prized possession. Ever since I got this grade at a 10, the momentum in my life has been crazy. This is my good luck charm. This is my prized possession. The uh, interest by the influencers and the celebrities uh, have brought in a lot more people to the hobby. This hobby is safe and this hobby is going to continue going. It's never been more popular or bigger. And a lot of that I personally attribute to people like Logan Paul. That is a crazy story.